she lost in Mexico. Two and winner here last year is here to try and close the gap between her and Emma Carney. This is the first of five World Cup races in the Southern Hemisphere and as the season draws to a close there are no clear winners leaving everything to race for. Brazil, probably the site of the most vibrant race in the world today. This is the third time the ITU World Cup has come to Ilius, and each year it breaks records for crowd support. In a town with a population of 250,000, nearly half have turned out to watch the world's best triathletes compete in a sport that is growing worldwide, but particularly in Latin America. Set on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean, the athletes have a two-lap saltwater swim, followed by an eight-lap, 40-kilometer bike tour of the town, including a three-kilometer out-and-back stretch along the beach road, finishing with a two-lap run around the same course. As well as Carol Montgomery and the Brazilians, the European strike force of Ralph Eggert, Philip Fattori, Sabina Vestov, who is back from injury, are keen to underline their presence. Added to this, we have a growing number of relative newcomers to the sport who are beginning to leave their mark. Faces to watch out for are the Australian, Nicole Andronicus, seventh in Cleveland, in only her first year as a triathlete. New Zealander Paul Amy, one of the fastest runners on the circuit, and the Russian Dmitry Gorg, who appeared in Bermuda as an unknown force and took victory. The weather is hot and the women head off first at 2 p.m. with the men starting just 10 minutes behind. Well, once again, it's looking like a tense, nervous start for this World Cup triathlon as the World Championships are now behind many of these athletes. As always, alongside myself, Nick Fellows in the commentary box, is Catherine Davis, former world number three. And Catherine, for a lot of these athletes, it's almost a relief that the world is behind them now and they can focus on the rest of the World Cup tour. You're right, Nick. Most of the athletes probably were peaking for the World Championships and they've had a month between that race and now, so they've had a bit of a rest and now they don't really know what kind of shape they're in. It's a big test here in Ilius. Well, there's an air of excitement out there as well as perhaps pre-race nerves because there is no Emma Carney. She was undefeated going into the World Championships and, of course, was overhauled by Jackie Gallagher. Do you think that will change the outcome of today's competition? Well, Carol was third in that race, and so she has to know that she's one of the, the clear favorites here. But you never know. These people have been training all year. They've been racing, and, and someone just might come up behind Carol and challenge her for the win. Well, Carol Montgomery has that incredible record of results when performing in Brazil. She's now now looking for her fifth consecutive win on the ITU World Cup Tour, but she's not the early leader. It looks to be Gail Lawrence from the United States of America, who is setting the pace, just tucked in behind her. If we can see correctly from the commentary position, it's Nikki Andronicus with Sharon Donnelly of Canada in third position. Very much early days, and of course, Montgomery, the favorite, is the big runner in the field here today. Well, when I was speaking to Gail before the race, she won three years ago, or two years ago, Nilius, and she really, really wants to try and have a chance today at that top spot. So she said she was going to go all out right from the beginning. And you can see she's leading the pack, but she's not able to get much of a distance on them. She's only a few a body length ahead, so I don't really know if she's going to be able to get much space on them. One or two of the Europeans who we've been following throughout the ITU World Cup Tour not present, including one of the very strong swimmers, Uta Mukul. She's not competing here today, but her teammate, Sabina Vestoff, is looking to keep the European hopes alive. But Gail Lawrence, so far so good in this salt water swim the difference between salt water and fresh water is that much of an advantage it's not that much of an advantage for the good swimmers because it means that the the weaker swimmers are actually able
able to float more, and it's all about flotation. The more you're able to float, the less resistance you offer to the water and the faster you can go. So the, the swimmers who might not normally be able to keep up with Gail might be able to hold on and swim on her feet. The Texan leads the field, Andronicus of Australia is second, Sharon Donnelly of Canada is third. Her PB on the tour this season was a second in Hamilton, 15th in the World Championships as Gail Lawrence strides out for her first victory of the season. Time Life Music presents. Here and in Rio next weekend and, you know, this is a place to be. This is definitely the place to be. Coming off the World Championships, I was a little disappointed with 16th. I was hoping to break in the top 10 this year, but it didn't work. So uh, hopefully I can do what I want to do here and uh, just make this kind of a tester for next weekend in Rio. Men prepare for their start. There's no world champion Simon Lessing amongst the field here today, which really does make it a wide open competition. I'm sure the Brazilians will be feeling a little pressure. They really are national heroes here, but they're always looking to stem off the challenges from the incredibly strong New Zealand and Australian athletes. Away they go. It's the same course for the men. Two laps in this saltwater Atlantic Ocean swim and once again Catherine we find ourselves talking about the hustle and bustle at the start of every swim we don't see too many of these kind of starts where you have to run in from the sand they had a good 10 meters there where they had to run in and the, the water is very shallow so you have to decide at some point that you're actually going to start swimming and stop running there it, there was a lot of uh, bumping and jostling going on and you can see the Brazilians in there there's a lot of pressure on them to do well in this race all their sponsors are national team national sponsors and they really really want to do well in their home territory well, unlike the women's chase, this is Hayden Woolley from New Zealand, a relatively unknown triathlete, certainly hasn't figured too strongly on the tour so far this season, but he's setting a blistering pace, already drawing clear. He really is pushing incredibly hard. Surely he can't keep this up. I wouldn't be surprised if he could, because remember, he was a national level swimmer back in New Zealand. He swam for something like 15 years, so he really does have the pedigree to swim well here. And he's got no other top level swimmer to, to stay with him. So they're, they're back they're in a big bunch they're already about 20 meters back that's really a surprising distance for only a few minutes into the race well the kiwi taking full advantage of his strength in the swim but of course there's the bike and the run still to come as the rest of the pack cross the screens we can note that the brazilians are in there manzan and macedo there's gail lawrence at the end of the first lap out of the water once again around the boy and back for the second lap but gail lawrence is off to a good start it looks to be like andronigus is tucked in behind her the canadian sharon donnelly is up there also carol montgomery pre-race favorite never a loser here in brazil is in with a chance but Gail Lawrence dominating the women's swim so far with another full lap to go there's not much distance in between them I expect they'll, they'll all get out in a pack at the end but you can see there's Hayden again and at 350 meters into the race he's got a huge lead I don't really know if that's very useful to him because he's just gonna have to ride alone on the bike and they'll catch him eventually but he doesn't seem to be expending any extra energy he's such a fantastic swimmer well, Woolley perhaps knows that that is the best tactic for him as Gail Lawrence is unable to shake off the challenges. There's three of them tucked in right behind now, both Nikki and Sharon right on the heels there. But this is Alexander Merzlov of Russia. He's tucked into second position as the Russian triathletes really start to become a new driving force on the ITU Tour with Dmitry Garg claiming top position in Bermuda earlier on in the season. And he's also in the chase pack as well, a very strong cyclist and runner. But there's a lovely shot of Hayden Woolley who's having what can only be described as an incredibly brave perhaps a little too brave a start to his competition but he's sensing that his only chance of a podium place which we've not seen from this Kiwi so far this season is to dominate purely dominate the men's swim section and hopefully hang on in the bike and run sections I would also suspect that the other swimmers know that he's not that much of a threat on the run anyway so they're keeping an eye on each other rather than on on Hayden Woolley there they know who's in the pack they know that Macedo's there that Manzan is there and they're just watching each other at this point seven minutes 51 seconds for 750 meters this is world-class swimming from Woolley but of course the triathlon
triathlon is about three disciplines. You can see him even having time to completely turn around to see where the rest of the field are. Look to the left of your screens now because we're still to see a swimmer climb out of the water who can challenge the Kiwi as he gets back into the water once again and immediately settles into that incredibly powerful stride pattern. Now the pack finally starts to get out of the water and the first one to chase the New Zealander is Alex Merzlov. He's going well, and perhaps is pacing Dmitry Gog. The Russians are looking strong, but let's not forget that Macedo is also just climbed out of the water, and he's a very strong runner and cyclist indeed. This is an impressive start from the Russians as well as the Kiwi leader. Well, Dmitry Gog certainly isn't known for his swimming. He must have been doing a lot of work in the pool to come out that far ahead of everyone else. There's Macedo there in the yellow swimming trunks. He's doing well. He's right in the pack. We haven't seen Manzan come by yet. There's been about 20, 25 guys going by, and and I think he's just coming around the boy now. Alexander Manzan, there he is. He's coming in behind the big pack, so he's got a lot of work to do to try and stay with them. But we should be able to spot the two Brazilian favorites by the cheers from the crowd. They really are adored by this huge crowd lining just about every possible viewpoint as we once again find ourselves focusing on the solo swim of Hayden Woolley from New Zealand. Look as our camera pulls back. They're the chase pack battling in vain. These are the normal sights that we're used to of the group behind, but Woolley is having the swim of his career. I've had a look at the field and it, it seems that I'm, I might be the only, um, you know, I might be, say, you know, a minute, minute and a half better than all the rest of the um, swimmers here. So there's probably two options. I can either stay back, hang back with the group, drag a couple of guys through and hopefully we can get away, or just go out and do it alone. And um, I guess, you know, just depending on how I get around that first boy and, and look back and see what's happening behind me, I think I'll take it from there. It's, it's really going to happen within the race itself. As the swim progressed, Gail maintained her position at the front of the pack, with Nicole Andronicus falling off to fifth. Race favourite Carol Montgomery, whose swimming has improved throughout the season, was tucked in with the leaders. In the men's race, New Zealander Hayden Woolley pushed on mercilessly, putting 50 seconds between himself and the large chase pack led by the Russian Alexander Merzlov. The women's section now comes to a close and leader from start to finish is Gail Lawrence for the United States of America. 18 minutes, 52 seconds for the 1500 meter swim. Quite a long way down to the transition area. Claudia Cortez of Chile is in second position there. What a marvelous latter section for her. Donnelly and Montgomery favorite is in fourth. Well, the story has not changed with regards to the men's swim competition. Hayden Woolley with a little bit of current blowing out there is looking as strong in the second lap as he did in the first. Well, with that kind of lead on the swim, he's going to be doing the first couple laps on the bike without any company, and that, that's pretty tough on this kind of course. But you can see that the women are now going through this long, long transition. It's about 400 meters from the edge of the water to the transition area. So that's going to make them have pretty heavy legs when they start out on the bike. And that 400 meter run has changed the positions already. Gail Lawrence has jogged into the transition area, still as leader, but now Carol Montgomery has moved ahead of Claudio Cortez, who was second out of the waters, now dropped to fourth, with Sharon Donnelly in third position, but we find ourselves once again discussing about this all-important speedy transition. Especially with these new drafting style races, you really have to make sure you get out there in the first pack, because if you miss that first pack, you could lose seconds to them on every single lap, and then just lose your chance for a spot on the podium. This is going to be a classic battle in the bikes section there are eight laps of a very difficult course but it looks to be gail lawrence maintains top position first away there she is pushing hard with the motorbikes leading her through and a very impressive transition from sarah harrow of new zealand who has gone second there it looks to be montgomery third possibly fourth battling it out but sarah harrow really has switched from swim gear to cycle kit very quickly indeed the women's race is still wide open gail lawrence starts to power on the pressure onto those pedals to pull clear but there is a whole host of talent behind her, including race favorite Carol Montgomery. Back to the men's swim. Hayden Woolley has been out there on his own, and it's a one-man battle. The question is, will he lose this advantage with having no one to draft with on the cycle section? It's a tactic that he told us before the race he was going to choose. The question is, will he pay dividends? I think that when it comes to the run, having done at least two or three of the laps on the bike by himself, he's going to have very heavy legs, and he will pay for that later on. He climbs out of the water 
with no question one of the best swims we've seen on the tour this season Hayden Woolley 16 minutes 09 seconds for the 1500 meter swim and his running begins with 400 meters to the transition back to the women Gail Lawrence race leader on lap one of eight to be contested she's looking for victory her first of the season she came close in Hamilton on the podium there and if anybody has the grit and determination this Texan certainly does Gail is a fantastic cyclist and she knows that if she wants to have a chance at beating Carol Montgomery she has to pull away on the bike but there's Hayden Woolley he's got a huge advantage he's gonna be way out ahead on the bike for quite a long time 56 seconds that is a remarkable swim on his part well we don't know too much about his cycling and running abilities we do know he is a swim specialist but he's given himself every possible advantage for his best performance on the International Triathlon Union World Cup tour so far this season what's important for us is that we know there are cycle and run specialists just behind him in the chase group we keep one eye on the clock and the other eye on to see who comes in second he's catching the Cuban there one of the Cuban women very late away from the transition area it's almost like the Formula One this with the tires and the fuel being having to be put into the car as quickly as possible it's all about the getaway now here come the two Russians Merzlov and Garg two and three interesting to note that these first Russian out of the water Merzlov could have been helping Garg with a faster swim he's a strong cyclist then comes the chase back which includes the Brazilians Ralph Eggert is in there there's a whole host of familiar names from the tour close behind there's Manzan listen for the cheers for this local hero he's got one minute 41 seconds to find he can find that in the run he needs a strong bike section and it's back to the bike section with Gail Lawrence still calling the pace but they're indicating wanting some support well she's just been around the turnaround and she's seen that she's only got about five seconds on them so it just makes more sense for her to work with them and try and get ahead from the chase pack behind them here are the two Russians again like the F1 drivers they need a quick getaway on with the bike shoes the bike the helmet everything has to be done before crossing the line but these two will work together rest assured that the Russian team will do everything they can to stop the Kiwi and deny the local favorites Macedo and Manzan a sweet victory on home territory there is the first of those two Brazilian stars, Leandro Macedo, who leads the ITU World Rankings going into this seventh competition, away into the eight-lap cycle section, very much in touch. Garg goes into the bike course. Ralph Eggert there, number three in the red jersey for Germany, is also in contention. And we looked for see if Manzan is in the chase or in touch there. The yellow shorts of the Brazilian team. And there is Alexander Manzan leaving the transition area women's race gail lawrence still is in the driving seat the chase pack getting closer nikki andronicus has come back again to head up the pack who are drafting very effectively it's been a bit of a whirlwind so far this year i've only actually started triathlon in march and uh you know within two weeks or so i was on the australian team and i've sort of everything's just snowballed from there so i'm really enjoying it I was actually a pentathlete in Australia and I've been competing for seven years in pentathlon but I decided to make the switch to triathlon when it was announced that triathlon would be an Olympic sport in 2000. With the men's competition, Hayden Woolley, as in the swim, is the sole athlete out on the road. He settled into a good pace but doesn't have the benefit of a pack to work with. This is the chase pack in the women's competition looking to swallow up Gail Lawrence. Amongst them is Hatfield from the USA, Gomez of Spain, Ochoa of Mexico and the Chilean is having an exceptional competition staying up there with the leaders. Natasha Hilgeholt from New Zealand is also in that chase pack there with Janet Hatfield, but the others are from Spain, from Chile, from Brazil, and the problem is, in this drafting format, is that you have to get, you have to get together and talk to each other, and in my experience, it's really hard if you don't all speak the same language. And in that first lead group, Nicole, Carol, Gail, Sabine, and Sarah, they all speak English, they're working really well together, they're rotating in formation, and so I expect them to have a really good cycle for that reason. And with the drafting in mind, one feels that Hayden Woolley will not be the leader for much longer. Here's the first of two chase groups. The first is just 17 seconds behind him. If you cast your memories back, the Kiwi had a 56-second lead over these competitors coming out of the water, and it's been whittled down with just about every metre of tarmac taken in by these very fast cyclists. Then we go back a little further to the second men's chase pack, which includes Luba and Philippe Fattori. 
The French duo are working well together, and Fattori is brimming with confidence after a very promising fifth in the recent Worlds. I had a really bad uh, beginning of season because I was hurt during all the winter, but uh, in August was was good for me because uh, I, be I became a French champion and uh, fifth at the World Champs, so it's, my, my shape is getting better and better, so I'm, I'm confident for that race. Back with the women's competition at lap two, and Gail Lawrence still in top position, but they are very close indeed, and it seems that one or two other cyclists have joined this chase group. The women's race is still wide open. This is the chase pack for lap two in the men, and leading that chase pack now is the local favorite, Alexandra Manzan looking very calm and cool. They know that it's only a matter of time before they close down on Hayden Woolley, who's leading for New Zealand. The lead women still has Gale pulling away, going into lap three with the men drafting off them. Now we go to the chase group for the women's competition. They're just beginning their third lap. They're around about one minute, 20 seconds behind the leaders. There is Leandro Macedo in that chase pack, now just 17 seconds behind the leader, which is still Hayden Woolley. There is the Kiwi. Now, perhaps starting to see his lead of this race diminished quite consistently, but also starting to feel the pace of perhaps pushing too hard too early on in the swim section as Gail Lawrence, like Hayden Woolley of New Zealand, has dominated from start to finish so far. It's the third lap of eight. A lot of work to do yet. Gail really wanted to win this race, as she told us before the start, but it looks like the chase back are holding off at about 10 metres behind her, so she's got a lot of work to do if she wants to take the race. Chase group two with the men, Fattori and Luba, working very effectively indeed. And the chase pack for the women is headed up by Callahan Hatfield. Still with quite a lot of work to do with the leading group with the women working very effectively and using the drafting to all of the riders' advantage. This is Woolley from New Zealand at the end of lap two. His lead has now diminished to some 10 seconds. It's only a matter of time before the chase pack swallow him up. If it looks like they're going to catch me, you know, by the second or third, maybe even fifth, fifth lap, then I'll probably just, you know, hang back and let him catch me. It's far easier just hanging out in the bunch, you know. Otherwise, you're wasting energy. The men's chasing pack caught Woolley up soon after in the third lap. Further down the field, Paul Amy was suffering from dehydration and by the fourth lap was forced to retire. In the women's race, the lead group that included race favourite Carol Montgomery were working well together, pulling further ahead of the chase women. This is lap five for the lead group with the men, and it really has become a very big group indeed. It means that it's possibly anybody's race. It also means for a very busy transition going into the final section. Now let's take a look at the women in lap five. This is the lead group. Harrow is in the lead now with Andronica second, and for the first time in the women's competition, Gail Lawrence is not in the driving seat, but Carol Montgomery looking quite comfortable, drafting well, tucked in right behind. This is the chase group. They are not working so well. The drafting is causing all kinds of problems. Perhaps it's a language barrier as the women's chase pack finds themselves two minutes behind the leaders. Back to the top group or the leading group. And they're reaching the end of lap five. And it looks to be Sabina Westhoff of Germany who's now taken the lead. But any one of these five athletes could take top position. Now we go to the men with Jose Barbonet in the lead with Dimitri Garg in second position. And there is Hayden Woolley, the early leader who had that fantastic swim, now swallowed up by the men's pack. That's also anybody's race. The women go into their sixth of eight circuits to be completed as we see something that's really quite unfamiliar in the sport of triathlon. The runners are leading the cycle competition. There's Hayden Woolley down, but the new leader, much to the delight of the local crowd, is Leandro Macedo, now forcing the pace in the lead group in the men's competition. They're just reaching the end of lap five. There's a tactical point to that as well, Nick, because if there is a crash in a pack like this, you want to be near the front, because if there is some kind of accident or mishap towards the middle, then it, they'll bring down everybody behind them. So the Brazilians know that. They're heavily, heavily favored. They're under a lot of pressure to do well, so they don't want to be involved in any kind of accident here. Hilga Holt leads the chase group for the women as they complete their fifth lap. But they have got a lot of work to do. 
language problems perhaps one feels the Americans have been doing all the work and the drafting hasn't really worked a good shot of how tight some of these bends are and how as our expert in the commentary box Catherine Davis has pointed out a crash could be oh so imminent with the men's competition as they weave their way through Carol Montgomery now takes the lead another runner heads the pack well like you said Nick they are working really well together and when they do that everybody has to take their turn at the front and it works out pretty fairly all around so you will see everyone even the top runners who don't usually come to the fore you'll see everyone taking their turn at the front and the turn is now on for Bob and a of Spain and Cameron Brown looks to be the runner-up oh. very close indeed in the men's competition back with the women once again this is the chase women's pack with some of the men just behind them there's Natasha Hilgeholt of New Zealand she's on lap six trying her best to motivate the cyclists behind her and you can see the lead men are just about to catch up to that chase pack of women they must be only 40 or 50 meters behind and that's going to be a bit of a scuffle when they have to pass the women because the women are not allowed to draft off the men that's one of the rules in triathlon and instantly right there you can see two women being pulled along that's not allowed so i wonder if they're going to be disqualified for that controversial maybe but the race goes on 27 kilometers into the bike ride, the lead men overtook the chase women. The chasing men that included Philippe Fattori had slowly eaten their way up to the leaders and in the sixth lap joined the now very large lead pack. Back to the race action with the women who are on lap seven. Sarah Harrow now takes the lead from Andronicus. She's pushing hard and this is a good example of how drafting can work. The lead pack for the men sees 20, perhaps 25 of the world's top triathletes all bunched up, all in search of victory here in Ilius. And it really will be a very busy transition area when the men come to switch from bikes to the running shoes. Back to the women once again, they will now start to cast their thoughts ahead to that all important final transition. Well, you won't see any of them trying to make a break from the pack now. They've probably gone down a gear or two to loosen up their legs for the run. And they know how far they are ahead of that chase pack from the, the turnaround. So the race is now among the five of them. Well, they stay focused and keep looking ahead in preparation. It's going to be very close and again a very important transition. But now we have news that Macedo is out. And this is a huge disappointment to the hosts of this triathlon. He's retired after seven laps of the cycle. He's obviously been knocked off the bike. It was a tactic that he was hoping to avoid. And that really is a disaster for Macedo and this huge crowd that have gathered to see a Brazilian victory. The Chilean steps up the pace in the women's chase group. But it's disappointing. Disappointment for the Brazilians who will now turn to Manzan with their hopes of a victory. The Brazilian cyclists are battling in vain to perhaps give themselves some world star status. But this is the man now who carries the hopes for the local victory. Alexandra Manzan will now know that Macedo is out of the competition and will have to battle it out on his own for Brazil. That's a lot of pressure on young Manzan. He's only been in the sport for three years now, but Macedo, has, he's, a, he's a local hero in Brazil. He won the gold medal in the first Pan American Games triathlon, and since then he's just a, become a household name. Well, this is another sign of the grit and determination from Gail Lawrence. She's gone back into first position. She led after the swim. She's drafted well. She's let every other athlete take their turn in lead position. But coming into the final transition area, it's the American back in top position once again, looking to keep that advantage over her arch rival, the Canadian Carol Montgomery. Another interesting development in the men as they are looking to complete their eighth and final lap. Victor Clevio is trying to break away for Argentina, sensing that it will be very congested going into the transition area and has probably witnessed Macedo, the local hero, come off the bike. Sarah Harrow now takes up the pace in the women's lead group with Gail Lawrence dropping back into second position. She'll not be too worried about that. The men leading, Clevio sets the pace. This is them going into their eighth and final lap. It looks to be Germany's Ralph Eggert is in third position. And still up there is the early leader, Hayden Woolley from New Zealand, who has battled well to stay up with the chase group for the men after putting so much effort into his 52nd advantage swim. The chase group for the women are still finalizing lap seven. 
They've got a lot of work to do. That's not been the most effective of chase groups from a drafting point of view. Tactics really not going the way of Callahan Hatfield, for example, who's battled in vain, hasn't really had the support from the Mexican, and Brazilian and Chilean triathletes up in that group. These are the leaders once again, Sarah Harrow, Gail Lawrence, Carol Montgomery. They're all up there. It's anybody's race. They're all fine, fine runners. But one has to give the advantage to Carol Montgomery, Catherine. You may remember, Nick, that Carol's personal best for the 10,000 meters is under 33 minutes. So she really is the finest runner of these five women in the lead pack. Sabina Vestoff now takes her turn to lead the group. Third in Hamilton, her best result this season. Sadly missed the World Championships through to injury as we quickly move back to the men. At about the halfway point in their eighth and final lap, just look at how many of them are bunched together. That close riding has already seen Macedo knocked off the bike and put out of the race. And it really is anybody's at this point in the competition. But as with the women, there's one or two strong runners in the pack there. The locals will be looking for Manzan to come out of the transition ahead. Also, Europe is represented by Ralph Eggert. The chase pack for the women's competition find themselves three minutes now down. And a classic case of non-cooperative drafting. But here she comes, Carol Montgomery. Remember, she's won four out of four triathlons here. And she's going in search of number five. Possibly the only one who may be able to give Carol a run for her money is Nicole Andronicus, three-time Australian pentathlon champion. A breakaway from the lead pack on the eighth lap for the men. It's Jean Sebastien Luber of France. There's about four or five other cyclists have gone with him, but he's very close indeed. The Frenchman obviously looking for a clear entry and exit to the transition area. And it's a transition area that the lead women's group are now coming into. Look at the athletes unclipping the toe pedals so that they can get off the bike nice and easily. It means that Gail Lawrence sweeps back into the lead once again as Carol Montgomery looks a little cautious and tentative coming into the transition area. Sabina Vestoff of Germany is second. There's Montgomery who looks to be third. They're all tucked in very closely, but it's the the leader off the swim, now leading off the bike, Gail Lawrence for the USA, should be the first away. You'll see some really fast transitions here. You know that they had their feet on top of their shoes as they were coming in. They just, they slipped off the bike, they slide on their running shoes, and away they go. I expect to see Gail. There she is, first out of the transition area. She's she's noted for her very fast transitions, and Carol stumbles a bit. She, she'll probably be last out, but I don't think that will worry her too much. An impressive time for Gail Lawrence for the 40 kilometer cycle section, but as focused and as positive as ever. Sarah Harrow is tucked right in behind her already. Carol Montgomery starts to make her move. Harrow goes for the sprint there and looks to take the lead early off Gail Lawrence. Just tucked in behind them is the pentathlete from Australia, Nicole Andronicus, who's having a sensational debut in her first year on the tour as the men now start to prepare for their transition. And one feels it's going to be a hell of a lot busier than it was for the women. There's the chase pack. They're three minutes plus plus off the pace, which means that these will be the athletes who will decide the podium positions here. An interesting difference in styles, a rush technique from Sarah Harrow, a much more calm and stylized running pattern from Carol Montgomery, who's been on the podium three times this season, the bronze medalist in the World Championships. And it's interesting to note that the gold and silver medalists from those World Championships are not here today. As the men come into the transition area, they also do not have their World Champion Simon Lessing to contest with. But here's a new name, Jean-Sebastien Luber, taking his chance with the more familiar Frenchman behind him. There's Ralph Eggert doing very well. Listen out for the cheer for Manzan. With it all to do, Fattori is fourth. Very close indeed, but Catherine, we're trying to say that the world champions are missing here. I expect they're resting up for the upcoming races in New Zealand and Australia, but they really are missing a fantastic experience here in Brazil. Uh, it's really interesting here, all these people shouting for you. Everybody knows you, and I think this is a special thing that you have, and this helps a lot. We'll see we, what we can do, and if we can make these people happy. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the people, the public, uh, everybody's shouting at, at, the, at the athletes, and it's, it's really wonderful to race here. It's the greatest, greatest race for spectators in the world. I've never been to a better race. Back to the race action with Carol Montgomery and Sarah Harrow now drawing clear of the rest of the field. Carol Montgomery on paper is the favorite. She's world ranked number three. Ralph Eggert has taken up the pace for Germany in the men's competition on the first of just two laps in this run section. Tucked in behind him though is a very powerful and accomplished runner, much to the delight of the local crowd, Manzan. 
The women's chase group finally make the transition area, including Hilgerholt, Hatfield and Newman. Haven't had the best of luck with the draftings or much cooperation within their group. We now look at Carol Montgomery smoothly taking the lead at the two kilometre mark. And it looks like the Kiwi Sarah Harrow is paying dividends for pushing too hard too soon. You can see that the men are actually about to pass the women. Now, this is unusual because the women's races are usually separate from the men's, so they're not on the, on the race course at the same time. But the men started only 10 minutes behind the women, so we can see Alex Manzan, who's now leading the men's race, has just passed the women's leader, Carol Montgomery. Nicole Andronicus there is also running almost alongside Ralph Eggert and Philippe Fattori. Eggert, the German, is second, Fattori, the Frenchman, is third as... Manzan starts to draw away. Nicole Andronicus really has grown in confidence off that seventh from the World Championship. She's lying third in the women's competition. It starts to get a little confusing with everybody running alongside each other. We'll try and keep you up to date, but what we can confirm, much to the delight of the local crowd, is that Alex Manzan is leading. Fattori there now taking in a little liquid is lying second with the German number one, Ralph Eger, just behind him. Then behind them, it looks to be Carol Montgomery who is leading the women's race. We heard the crowd really roar when Alex went around the turnaround point here. Now you can see all the athletes are wearing their sponsors printed on their vests, but Alex's sponsor is actually a Brazilian supermarket chain. So they know when they read the Pau de Açúcar words, they know that he's from Brazil and they're just roaring to see a Brazilian in first place in this race. All 110,000 of them, as we've had confirmed from the local organizers. This is the golden junior of triathlon for Brazil, now starting to make his mark as a senior triathlete. Also, Philip Vittori is having one of the best competitions we've seen from him so far this season. To remind you that Manzan has already won on the tour this season, round two in Gamagori. Vittori has yet to climb on the podium, but has been improving both with form and confidence throughout the tour. Carol Montgomery has had a scintillating season and will possibly draw back at the somewhat disheartened Emma Carney if she can claim top position here today. Manzan settles into this very confident stride pattern that he demonstrated in Gamagori, Japan, a former junior duathlon world champion, and Fattori, the Frenchman, is now settling for second position, it seems. Doesn't seem to have the strength in the legs to attack Manzan, and will now focus on holding on to that runner-up spot. Carol Montgomery with that beautiful, smooth stride that almost took her to the Olympic Games, a 10,000-meter runner for Canada, also looks to have the women's race in the bag, but the battle is on, perhaps between Dimitri Gorg, who's taken third position away from Ralph Eggert, and Eggert will need to show some strength in the second and final lap if he's to put Germany on the podium here today. Philippe Fattori is lying in second place, and he won the French Championships just two weeks ago, so he's feeling very confident in this race, and his season hasn't been that long since he did miss the first half of it, so I, I would expect he's in good shape for the rest of the World Cup races. And Manzan, perhaps sensing that Macedo is out of the competition, could go into the lead in the ITU World Cup Tour standings here. Fattori is having a fantastic finish to his season, and it seems to have turned about after that fifth position in the World Championships, the French title, and now he'll be on the podium for the first time this season in the ITU World Cup Tour. Dmitry Garg of Russia, winner in Bermuda, proving that that's no one-hit wonder for this rising star from Eastern Europe. He's paced himself very well, and when once again shows that the run section is the area where he can gain most of his ground. Ralph Eggert is just behind him, the German, but Russia really is starting to become a force to be reckoned with. Carol Montgomery takes a quick liquid intake, but you can see the runners behind her seeming to lose the pace as the Canadian senses that this could be her first victory. The motorbike escort for Alex Manzan. The Brazilians have come out in force. Thousands of them have lined the course, and the goods have been delivered. He looks unstoppable with a very strong second lap, looking fresh indeed, as is Carol Montgomery. T2 now striding clear ahead of the rest of the field. Fattori will be delighted with this performance, and who knows what can happen in the next event in Rio de Janeiro for Philippe. Possibly the man from Gerard Mayer could claim his first victory of this season. He hasn't won a race this season. In fact, I don't think he's ever won a World Cup race, and he certainly wants to, and he is one of the top triathletes in this sport. So I think he's got a good chance either this week or next. Gorg has won this season. He won in Bermuda, but he's desperate to prove that he's here to stay and is not just one of the one-off or one-hit wonders, as we often call them in triathlon. Gorg, who worked very well with his partner, Melzov, is now looking to claim third spot. There's Ralph Eggert, one of the top Europeans. 
And just behind him is Samuel Periclou for France, showing what a strong and serious team they have fielded at this World Cup competition. Well, France has actually brought a team of three men to this race, and they have a manager along with them. So I think they're starting to take the World Cup really seriously, as it will be the qualifying tour for the, the Olympic Games and the World Championships. Now it looks like Carol Montgomery is getting involved with some of the runners or the later runners in the men's group. She's got to try and stay out of trouble here and make sure that these back markers in the men's competition don't unsettle her rhythm, which is vital to Carol Montgomery. Just behind her, it looks to be a chase or a battle between Andronicus and Harrow. Manzan at the six kilometer mark, looking as smooth and as comfortable as ever. The runner-up position has changed in the women's competition. Second place is now taken by Nicole Andronicus. Really, the fairy tale story of the women's ITU World Cup tour. A year ago, she was focusing on being a pentathlete. Now she finds herself one of the world's leading triathletes and is on target for a PB here. Well, the women's pentathlon is not actually an Olympic event, and so when she heard that triathlon was going to be in Sydney, her hometown, she decided to make the switch over to triathlon, and what a good choice that was. Savina Vestoff of Germany, she's had a brave performance. Remember, she's back off an injury. She's been out for some three to four weeks. She's still holding on to fifth position with Hayden Woolley, the early swim leader running alongside her. This is the men's race leader, Manzan. Ralph Eggert is in fourth place. He's looking for one of his best results on the ITU Tour so far this season. Germany's number one triathlete. He's had a grueling season. He's entered just about every competition that's been up for grabs, including four or five races in between between the World Championships and this ITU World Cup competition. Philippe Fattori is on target for a PB this season as the French squad demonstrate their strength and depth. They are very much taking their Olympic performances seriously indeed as Carol Montgomery will earn some valuable points in her quest to deny Emma Carney the World Cup title. The tour leader deciding not to race here in Brazil, but the Australians still represented in strength as Nicole Andronicus battles bravely behind Carol Montgomery, as does Gail Lawrence for the United States of America. She's just behind the Aussie in third position. It's very warm and humid out there, and Philippe Fattori is being caught by Dimitri Gog. This is very disappointing for the Frenchman. They're at around about the seven and a half kilometer mark, but the Russian showing the strength and his favored discipline of the three, Catherine. You may remember, Nick, that Dimitri Gag actually won the bronze medal in the Goodwill Games Triathlon back in 1994. So he, it's not as if he's come from nowhere. He's got a good running background, but he's also been a good triathlete. Well, both Manzan and Garg have each won an ITU World Cup competition this season. It was Bermuda for the Russian, and it was Japan for the Brazilian. Fattori's not going to let Garg get away with it without a chase and a fight going into the closing stages. Carol Montgomery looking very smooth, not getting as much pressure put upon her as Manzan is from the Russian and the Frenchman. And one feels that these two have got a little bit left in their legs. It could come down to a sprint finish here. Who knows, with Egert and Radkovic moving very strongly up the field. And it's those three triathletes that we now focus on. Radkovic has almost come from nowhere to take fourth position. Fifth now is the German Ralph Eggert. And Samuel Pierre Clot is in sixth position for France, showing the strength and depth of the European Tour triathletes. And there's Carol looking like she's suffering a bit from the heat. She's looking a bit heavy, but she's taking the turnaround clear going into the last two and a half kilometers of the run. when on form she's a serious threat at the top her running is clearly her forte and brazil her showground she has won four out of four times in brazil and it looks like this will be the fifth like montgomery alexandra manzan is a run specialist who stormed away from the very large lead pack having won his first ever itu race in japan at the beginning of the season he's proven he's no flash in the pan Manzan heads for home with an elated and ecstatic Brazilian crowd. Macedo was out, but Manzan grabs the flag and delivers the goods that they've become so expectant when their triathletes perform on home soil. This is a memorable victory for Manzan, his second ITU World Cup Tour victory of the season, and it could take him to the top of the tour rankings with a lot of the big Australians missing. It's also a great performance for Fattori, who out-sprints Gog coming into the finish, the Russian having to settle for third. 
This is a sweet moment for Manzan, who a year ago was runner-up to Macedo. It's his first win on home territory, and he's absolutely delighted. An emphatic victory for the Brazilian, with Fattori showing his strength and determination, and also his newfound form to pick up his personal best on the tour so far this season. The tour heads off to Rio de Janeiro, and who knows, Fattori could even go one place better. He'll certainly be looking forward to the next competition. Dmitry Gar claims third place for Russia to go with his win in Bermuda, proving that he and Russian triathletes are a force to be reckoned with. He'll also be very happy to performing well under such extreme conditions here in South America. The man who lives east of Moscow is not too sure about the hot weather. He will be satisfied with this placing today. A fantastic battle between Germany's Egert and Nick Radkovic, but Ralph Egert getting the better of the Brazilian to claim fourth position for Germany. Radkovic still a PB for him in fifth spot. Uh, yeah, for me it's really a pleasure to win here in my country, where the people shout me every time. It's really like I haven't felt, I haven't felt something like in years. It's, re it's really good to win around the world, but here in your country, with your big rivals, it's really nice. It's really a pleasure for me. Yeah, I'm very happy. Our second place, it's great, great place uh, behind Alex. Alex Manzan was in his own country with the crowd, with all the Brazilian behind him. So it was very strong today, and uh, uh, at the World Champs I was stronger than him on the run, but today it was very strong, so I'm very happy with my second place. The final stages of the women's competition sees the 30-year-old from Vancouver, British Columbia, claim her first victory of the season and maintain her amazing record when performing on Brazilian soil. Carol Montgomery strides nonchalantly into the finish to claim her first victory, it's a great performance. It also puts the pressure on Emma Carney when they meet, perhaps in Rio, but certainly in Australia to the latter part of the tour. The Brazilians have grown to love Carol Montgomery, and she has grown to love the tour here in Brazil. An emphatic victory for the Canadian, a bronze medal in the Worlds, and now top honours in the ITU Tour Round 7 in Ilius, Brazil. <laughs> This is one of the stars of the future from Australia. Nicole Andronicus at just 24 years of age, the pentathlete who's just joined the triathlon tour on a bike for the first time in March of this year, and she's runner-up to Montgomery. Seventh in the world, claims her first podium on the tour. And Gail Lawrence, who battled so bravely in the swim and the cycle section, has to settle for third position. She was runner-up in Bermuda, but maintains her performances of one of the world's top triathletes. Two hours, eight minutes, and seven seconds for the American. We stayed pretty close in the swim, and um, I got beat up pretty bad. And then on the bike, we worked it really, really hard. And, and I was a little over my head, and, and uh, you know, I gave it 110% today. I'm really tired. I knew I had a good shot at winning because the only people that have beaten me this year weren't here. So I knew I had a good shot, and it was uh, it's pretty exciting winning in Brazil with all the spectators. I really like to um, get second in the series this year. I mean, Emma's sort of out of touch, but Jackie, I think, still reachable. So I'm hoping uh, to do all the rest of the races and, and maybe get second. I'm really, really happy. It was a hard, hard race, and I hung on for dear life in that run. I was really suffering in the wind and everything, but I'm so happy. Confirmation of the men's results sees Alex Manzan go one place better than a year ago to record his first victory on home soil. Fattori also records a PB in runner-up position. Dimitri Gog claims his second podium of the season. Eggert continues to show his consistency on the ITU World Cup Tour. And the promising junior, Nick Radkovic, finally starts to show form in the senior ranks. Carol Montgomery records her first victory of the season. The fairy tale story continues with Nicole Andronicus, who gains more confidence with every competition she enters. Gail Lawrence confirms she's a world-class triathlete. Sabina Graf will be delighted with her result after an injury. And Andriana Piercek records a PB in fifth position. So the ITU Tour standings see Manzan take the lead away from Macedo, who sadly crashed out of today's race. Simon Lessing is third, Eggert is fourth, and Dimitri Garg moves up into fifth position.
the women's tour rankings, the top position is unchanged, although Emma Carney did not participate today. But Carol Montgomery leaps ahead of world champion Jackie Gallagher to go into runner-up position. Rena Hill is fourth, and Gail Lawrence also moves into the top five. Emma Carney will also not be competing in Rio de Janeiro, which will give Montgomery another chance to draw closer to the Australian. The Brazilians are world famous for their ability to party, and Alex Manzan has given them fair reason to celebrate. Another hero, however, is not so lucky. Leandro Macedo, having fallen on the bike course, is left with his World Cup hopes in jeopardy. With two broken bones in his hand, he is unlikely to compete in the next round of the ITU World Cup. With only four rounds left, the favourite for the title could be out, and the World Cup rankings have been left wide open. But it's the other top Brazilian, Manzan, who is now in pole position to take the world crown. But there are, of course, several people who are in contention. Carol Montgomery has taken one step close to threaten Emma Carney at the top. We leave the beautiful and exotic setting of Ilius, Brazil. Once again, it has been a great race here in Bahia. Join us again next week for the very best in world triathlon racing as the tour moves on to one of the most famous cities in the world, Rio de Janeiro, for round eight of the ITU World Cup. From all of us here, it's goodbye for now.